today's project diary, I will teach you how to make a completely safe, organic, homemade repellent. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. Now hopefully by now you've seen my how to start a square foot gardening video. If not, the link is up here. So you'd know that I'm about to plant a lot of my garden up. But unfortunately, overnight this happened. Yes, something got into the garden and it's starting to dig up a lot of things and it's also chewing away at the string that I've put out as well as other things. Uh, so I can't figure out, unless I have some night vision cameras which are really expensive, I can't figure out what animal's done this. So it could be a rabbit, it could be a fox, it could be next door's cat, it could be a whole multitude of anything that's come into the garden. Uh, so today I'm going to teach you how to make a repellent. Uh, now this will repel anything from uh, foxes, rabbits, hedgehogs, small mammals such as rats, mice, voles and moles, pet dogs, cats and even larger animals such as deer. It will also repel a majority of worms and insects. Now it will repel some beneficial insects if you do use it, so just use it carefully. Uh, it's mainly for certain areas of the garden that you feel that are coming in and getting attacked by whatever uh, animals coming in. But anyway, straight to it. Uh, today is how to make a homemade repellent. Now just to clarify, this is a repellent. It will not kill anything. It's just designed to keep certain animals away from that part of the garden. Now as I don't have any electrical points in the shed, I've boiled the kettle and filled a glass bowl up with water. So the first ingredient I'm going to add is mint. Now you can use spearmint or peppermint. Now different mint plants will repel different animals, but this ingredient will help repel aphids, tomato hornworms, asparagus and squash beetles, leaf hoppers, fleas, moths, ants, small rodents such as mice and rats, and cabbage loopers. When picking the leaves give them a slight squeeze. This will bruise them and allow the scent to seep into the water. Now it's up to you how much you use but I'm going to use roughly a handful. Now if you haven't grown fresh mint you can use a mint tea bag. This will probably work even better. Then just push them into the water as if you're making a mint tea. Unfortunately the chilies that I'm growing aren't ready to harvest yet so instead I'm going to use some cayenne pepper. But if you are growing your own chilies and they are ready you can use between two and four of your hottest chilies for this. Chop them up seeds and all or use a blender. The sheer potency of chilies can sometimes even make humans sneeze so you can imagine what it's like for other animals with heightened sense of smell. I seem to be having a job getting a chili out as it's got moist in the shed. So I'm just going to tap it on the side and hopefully it will release some. Well that seemed to work well. If you are using chili powder you need two really heaped teaspoons. The next ingredient is garlic. Now again mine aren't ready to harvest yet so I'm using garlic granules. Again you can use fresh garlic. You just need to add between two and four larger cloves. Garlic will help repel root maggots, cabbage loopers, Mexican bean beetles, peach tree bores, and again small mammals like rabbits and rodents. Hopefully you'll be doing this in the kitchen and it'll be much easier if you use electrical devices like a blender. Especially if you're using the fresher ingredients like the garlic and chilies. Just blitz it for a minute or so and allow it all to mix in with the water. The last ingredient is oil. Now you can use vegetable oil, rapeseed oil, sunflower oil, anything that's cheap and organic. All you need is one teaspoon. This ingredient allows all the others to stick to whatever surface you spray it on, be it leaves, stems, pots or soil. Just give it a really good stir and then let it sit for four or five hours. You may have to keep stirring it every now and then and make sure all of the powder keeps blending in with the water. Obviously using a blender will speed this process up but I'm going to do this a few more times and then leave it overnight. So I've let this steep for 24 hours. As you can see all the bits are floating to the bottom um, which I don't mind at this stage now. Obviously if you're going to take this in, inside or indoors and use it in the kitchen um, just place it in a saucepan and all you need to do is bring it up to the boil um, and then if you're using electric especially uh, you can leave it on the hob and just let it simmer uh, until it starts cooling down it should only take about four hours or so but um, under no circumstances do I like putting um, boil anything boiling in plastic um, you shouldn't really um, microwave plastic 
or put anything hot in it or even um, put it in a dishwasher. So I definitely don't recommend doing any of those, which is why I'm using the glass bowl. Um, so the next stage is I just want to filter all the bits out. And my mum's <laughs> thankfully given me one of her tights. Uh, so you can use these or a pop sock. Uh, anything with just a really thin gauze on it, really. Um, so I'm just going to put this into uh, a jug now it's all cool and then filter it out into a bottle but I'll do that at a close up right now. So it's fine to pour this liquid into a plastic jug now it's at room temperature and as you can see there's quite a bit of powder and chunks at the bottom here that you don't really want into your spray bottle. I'm going to try and get as much powder out as possible because this will clog up the end of the nozzle pipe or the actual nozzle itself. So I'm just carefully going to put the gauze over the top of the jug in order not to split it. I'm going to use my ever faithful bottles that I get from the 99p store. You get two for 99p which is really good value. If you are using old detergent bottles make sure they're thoroughly cleaned and don't have any chemical residue in them. Then just carefully pour the liquid into the bottle. Now be really careful not to get this on your clothes or your skin because some people may have a really bad reaction to the chemicals let off by the chilies. Now I'm sure there's a different and easier way of doing this, but this is all I have to hand at the moment. If you can think of an easier way of straining this, please leave me a comment in the message box below. After a minute or so, it's strained really nicely. And as you can see, all the powder and bits are left in the jug. Now you are left with a really potent liquid, so you do want to dilute it a bit. So before you put the nozzle on, you want to add some more water to fill the top of the bottle up. Now I'm just adding regular tap water and you want to roughly dilute it 2 to 1. So that's 2 parts water to 1 part repellent mix. Once you finish using this mixture you need to keep it somewhere cool and out of direct sunlight as it will only stay fresh and usable for up to a week. If it rains you will need to reapply this daily but only make as much as you need for a short period of time. Then all you have to do is screw the lid on gently but tightly and then it's all ready just to apply. So once it's finished make sure you give it a good shake every single time that you use it just to make sure it all uh, blends up well. Uh, now typical this is England um, so we are forecast five days of rain um, so this will basically just wash off uh, when it does rain so you'd have to reapply. Uh, usually it should last between sort of five days to a week uh, on better weather. Um, so usually I wouldn't um, apply this to the garden right now but as this is a video I'm going to show you anyway and I'm just going to show you how to do that now. So as you can see something's getting underneath the shed and the smell of urine is almost unbearable. I've made sure whatever it is isn't still under there and I'm just going to spray all around the hole. I'm also going to cover up these holes here with the soil and then I'm going to spray it all over including all the sides of the beds, a string and the top of the soil. Now I've noticed that every time I prepare new soil, local foxes and cats always come in and use these beds like kitty litter trays. So this should help to reduce that and allow me to plant up my square foot garden successfully. Now if foxes, cats or dogs do defecate in your vegetable patches, you really want to get rid of their droppings as soon as possible because they can contain harmful bacteria you don't want in your soil. Just make sure the nozzle is set to the widest and finest spray that you can. Now as long as you do this really lightly it shouldn't harm the soil at all and you can spray it anywhere that you like. Now as you can see something's even got in here and started digging up all of my flower bulbs. Now lilies and other flower bulbs are a delicacy to some animals but using this spray all over the flowers and the ground should stop any of these animals coming in and digging them up. Also, and I can't stress this enough, make sure you apply it after sundown. The oil in this will bake your leaves if you do it in direct sunlight, but it won't affect them after it's allowed to dry. And make sure you're not downwind when you're spraying it because you really don't want to get a face full of this. My next few videos will be on growing lilies from bulbs and how to treat scarlet lily bug. So if you're interested in watching these, please subscribe. So as I said, you really do want to go lightly on this. You want to set the nozzle to the finest spray and wide uh, and just spray this extremely lightly everywhere because it is really potent. Um, but hopefully today's video has been help for you. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again next time. Take care. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you've tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group 
where thousands of people are posting photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.